Good morning, Coronado. Welcome to Cougar TV, the finest news program in the country. I'm Lakeith Trainer, And I'm Xavier Romero. Trump, Carson, Sanders, Clinton. The GOP race is in tight contention as recent polls show Bernie Sanders with 30% support, catching up to Hillary Clinton with 37. In the race for the Republican ticket, Donald Trump is earning 23% support, with Dr. Ben Carson catching up at 18%. No other Republican is currently above 8%. With the current GOP races, Cougar TV wanted to hear some of the Coronado students' opinions on politics. We went out into the hallways and asked people what they thought and what they felt about the particular candidates. Okay, so have you been following the presidential candidates at all? Um, I've been trying to, but I don't know. So what are your opinions on most of them? Do you know a whole lot of them? Um, I know a few. Um, I'm not too fond of Donald Trump. I'm not too fond of Hillary Clinton. Um, a lot of the candidates seem to not really care about a lot of the population, and that kind of bothers me a bit. Are there any candidates in particular that you're fond of? Um, I like a lot of Bernie Sanders' views, but I'm not sure if he could make it that far in the presidential election. Um, I also kind of like Marco Rubio, so I've been following him a little bit. Okay, so how about you? What are your opinions on the candidates? Um, I think that a lot of them are too radical, in my opinion. Um, I, I think that Bernie Sanders is a bit too far left, Donald Trump's a bit too far right, and the happy middle would probably be Hillary Clinton, maybe Rand Paul, or uh, Marco Rubio. Yeah. Do you consider yourself a Republican or Democrat? Uh, me personally? I vote Republican, but that's only because I stand with them economically, but socially I'm more Democratic. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. So what do you guys know about the new presidential candidates that are running? Um, not, not a whole lot. I, the only people I know that are running is Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And Kanye in 2020. Yeah. Kanye 2020. What do you guys think about those two? Don't um, like them. Well, I, I don't really I don't have like much Trump. opinion. Trump. Don't like Trump. No. no. Why not? No, because... He's going to waste our money. He's, and he's racist. Yeah. I, like, I, don't, I don't know what other people say, like Ann Coulter, but she's, they, he's a racist, definitely. Yeah. Yes, I, that's that's what I think it means. I don't know, I know there's a bunch of, bunch of Republicans running, but I don't know who, who they are. They're not... They're not uh, in the media as much as Trump. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for talking about this and <laughs> yeah. being a very comfortable couch. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see who gets the nomination for each party next March. Now let's talk to Lakeith about some advice for the freshmen. In West Philadelphia, born and raised, on the playground is where I spent. Wait, I'm not talking about fresh princes. I'm talking about the fresh cougars of Coronado, the freshmen. Cougar TV decided to ask some upperclassmen for advice they can give the freshmen in how to survive high school. Uh, some tips I have for freshmen are, you know, just stay focused, do your work, you know, get to class on time. Um, just go to a lot of after school events like football games because that's what I missed out on when I was a freshman and just get really involved in the school. Some great advice there, young ones. And my tip to you all is the halls are for walking, not congregating. Enjoy high school. Now let's send it over to Bo with your Cougar Sports News. Thanks, fellas. Let's see how your Cougars did last week. It was a tough loss for the varsity football team, losing 0-49. Girls softball won 10-2. Tennis won multiple meets. They beat Rampart 4-3, Mesa Ridge 4-0, Fountain Fort Carson 7-0. Volleyball won 3-0. With the tennis team finishing their second tennis match, we decided to interview one of the players, James Belke Jr., after his match against Rampart. I've been preparing a lot the, the summer and everything for the season, so uh, I just really show it out there on the court. All right, uh, for the season, um, I'm hoping to make the state and be really competitive in state. Um, as for the team, I think a lot of our guys can make it to state and be really competitive, so I think it'll be a good season. The boys tried their best and came out on top 4-3. to three. Today after school, the boys team will be playing another match against Pine Creek. Come out and support them in one of their toughest matches of the season.
To find out a list of other upcoming sporting events, you can go to the Athletic Web page on the Coronado website. Back to you, Xavier. Did you see the calves on that man? Whew! A tennis player for show. In a more serious matter, though, recently many schools have inducted armed security for the safety of the students and staff. Now let's head out to stand in the field with some students and their thoughts on the situation. Hi, I'm Stan Rubio. I'm here today with freshman Dominic Atencio. Dominic, how do you feel in terms of armed security here at Coronado? Well, I don't think they should be armed with guns or anything. I don't think it's necessary that anything bad happen like that at school or anything. And I don't think it's safe enough for kids around kids like that because if somebody gets mad, they could try to grab it or something. They should, if they, if anything, they should have like a taser. <laughs> instead of a weapon so if something does happen they don't have to like hurt them they could just like like not kill them but just hurt them instead of something very good very good when do you think a firearm would ever be necessary here at our school if somebody came onto our campus or something that tried to harm or something or if they or if somebody brought a gun to school I could see it's necessary but when do you ever see that happening at school I we barely even see that in Colorado Springs. All right, now I'm here with freshman Melissa. Melissa, how do you feel in terms of armed security here at Coronado? I think they should have it because there are a lot of shootings around, like in the theaters and stuff, and we should like protect the children. And it's um, a lot safer than if they had like a knife or something, because then if they like came running in, they could just like shoot them. Well, not like that, but mm -hmm. it'll just be more safe because like it'll protect all of us instead of them, all of us getting killed, like, I'll just protect us. Have you ever felt uncomfortable at all at any time with them walking around with guns? No, <laughs> not really, because I know they're not going to, like, just start shooting randomly. All right. Thank you for your time, Melissa. Rubio, here now with Officer Adam. How are you doing today, Officer Adam? I'm well. How are you? I'm great. All right. Um, we wanted to ask you a couple questions about armed security today. Okay. So the first one we have for you is, um, how do you feel about security guards actually carrying guns at school? You know, yeah, I think it's one of those things, it's unfortunate we live in a world that, that we have to have that. Um, that being said, you know, I think in a, I think none of us can deny that in, in a situation where if there's a bad guy here at school that has a gun, the more trained people we can have with firearms to stop the incident faster, the, the safer we all are. Okay. What kind of training did they actually have to have in order to carry the firearm? Um, they had to do some standard firearms training qualification. Um, they did quite a few hours of just normal shooting. Uh, mm -hmm. In addition to that, too, I do a lot of training with them on active gunman scenarios. Gotcha. Um, we did some stuff with our SWAT team last year. Uh, you know, so I try to do some ongoing training with them. So that, not that they're going to be trained to the, to the level of a police officer, but the more realistic I can make it for them, the better off they are exactly. and the better off I am. Yeah. Um. In what kind of situation do you think they would ever need to pull out the actual gun itself? You know, it's kind of a, a last-ditch kind of thing. Obviously, if somebody walks onto campus with a gun, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a problem we need to address right away. And really, the, the only way or the best way to address a, a deadly force or, you know, somebody with, with a firearm is with a firearm. Um, you know, we have, we have kind of a, a joking statement is don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Um, you know, so if, if a bad guy comes here with it with a gun or something like that, we want that over fast. So that would be really the scenario that would that we would use it. So instead of a firearm, do you think tasers could be used at all? You know, there's a there's a place for a taser. I mean, obviously we we carry them too. Um, you know, but a lot most times here at school, you know, you're talking about fights and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily a situation where you want to introduce a taser just because. There are some other factors we have to consider safety-wise for everybody else that's involved. So, you know, tasers have a place for the most part, like I said, for, for our security. Most of the time we can handle things, breaking things up, um, you know, just separating the parties. Guns are really for a worst-case scenario situation. All right. Thank you, Officer Adam. We appreciate your time. Outstanding. Thanks, Stan. Looks like our security is prepared for anything this year to protect the students and staff of our wonderful campus. Well, that about wraps up another week of Cougar TV. Join us next week to find out what's happening in your hallways. I'm Xavier Romero. And I'm Lakeith Trainer. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great rest of the week.